Um, I remember my dad saying at one point that, um, you know, the sexual revolution came along and broke up the family. Okay. And a lot of people will say something like that. Um, they also talk about who was the father of the sexual revolution. Uh, Sigmund Freud, Alfred Kinsey, Hugh Hefner. Uh, Bob Guccione has tried to claim that title. Publisher of Penthouse Magazine. Um, in a little essay called himself the uh, father of the sexual revolution. Now, there's an interesting thing there. The sexual revolution is a motherless child. You know, there's a lot of there are men who've been suggested as the father, but there's nobody suggested as his mother. Okay. <clears throat> now, all those fellows may have had, um, you know, influence. I don't deny that. But I tend to not have a good Queen Bess, bad King John view of history or of social phenomena. I tend to look at things from a more systemic, deeper sort of perspective. Okay. Now, what was called the sexual revolution really wasn't a revolution. It was just uh, sexual mores, um, we're not quite as strict, tended to loosen up a little bit. Uh, pornography became an erotica. Pornography and erotica became um, fairly accepted and, reg and widely available. Um, <coughs> laws against <coughs> fornication, adultery, sodomy were pretty much um, jettisoned or at least not enforced. Okay, now, what was the reason that for the loosening of sexual mores or acceptable sexual mores? I don't think it can be traced to an individual. I don't really believe individuals have that much power. They have some, but they don't have that much. Okay, two factors that tend to get overlooked. People started living much longer than they had in the past. It's a lot easier to keep a marriage going till death do us part when the average person lives to be 40 years old than when the average person lives to be 80 years old. The other factor was that as society became increasingly more technical, it required more training for people to be able to support themselves and then on top of that, support of a family of ch that included children. Uh, it took more years of one's life to really get underway. I mean, people have to get that college, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21. And um, so that people are much more likely to be able to remain virgins until their wedding night, um, especially the, the female. <coughs> Very often, it was accepted that men would be experienced. The female would usually be a virgin. If they marry in their late teens, then if they marry in their mid to late 20s. Okay. So, I really think that the so-called sexual revolution, which I don't really like that term very much, but I have to kind of force to use it, <coughs> is the result of people living a lot longer than they had in the past eras and it taking more years to really get your life underway so that a person is self-supporting and then on top of that has the ability to support children. Okay. Um, it used to be not too long ago that, you know, um, man didn't even have to graduate from high school. He could get a, um, a factory job and if they live frugally he could support himself the housewife he married and a couple of kids as well okay but it's very difficult to do that these days you know it's more likely that the family will be homeless okay but anyway those two factors are two factors that aren't looked at and part of the reason they're not looked at is people want a bad King John, good Queen, Queen Bess view, and they don't, you can't really point your finger at somebody. 
Okay. But the two factors that I think led to the sexual revolution, or the so-called sexual revolution, were that people were living longer and that it took that an increasingly technologically advanced society, it took more years for people to really get their lives underway so that they could marry and in the case of most people have children as well. Okay, so I just wanted to put that out there.